Hey everyone, welcome back to Mark Loeffler Experience. Today we're sitting down with Chris Davies from Canadian Department Advisors out here in Edmonton, Alberta. And we're gonna talk economics of Edmonton, Alberta, what he sees going forward, what's happened in the past couple months, and uh, why we both think it's a great opportunity out right now to be buying in Alberta. All right, Fireside well, chat, what? real fire. Fireside chat. They won't let me smoke a cigar in here while we're doing it though. It's gonna get fairly warm, so it'll be a short video. 100%. All right, so Chris, let's talk. Uh, let's talk Edmonton. Absolutely. All right. So, what are we seeing in the Edmonton market today? Seventy-five thousand people moved to Alberta last year. Uh, the bulk of those land in Calgary, and then they realize Calgary's expensive, and they have the same employment base, so they come to Edmonton, um, where Edmonton has one of the highest uh, household incomes mm -hmm. of any city in Canada. Average weekly earnings are, I think, another like one hundred and fifty dollars higher than the next highest. City. Yeah, and houses are affordable here. Mm -hmm. Your average house price is just a little over three hundred thousand dollars, and it obviously hasn't changed much over the year because, well, Ontario is collapsing, and I mean you still got lots of jobs here, and obviously real estate's still doing well. Yeah, rates up just a tiny bit this morning, but uh, you know things took things took. Uh, Bit of a pump last year. I think house prices were up about six percent, and they're back down a couple percent, but hardly any movement at all, considering what's going on in the rest of the country. Yeah. Um, we have probably one client, one client a month, who's like, I could sell my house in Ontario for a million four, and buy the same house in Edmonton for four hundred k, pocket a million bucks. Probably wouldn't want to live in that neighborhood. They'd probably be six hundred. But anyways, this is true. It, 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 it's still a significant difference, and people are doing that a lot, mm -hmm. right? People are actually. Pulling up roots, selling for one, two million, buying out here for six to eight hundred, and you know, and they're making more money when they move out here. Yeah, paying less in taxes, more in their pocket. And the big thing on top of that, we see lots of interprovincial migration. We're seeing a lot of international migration, and Alberta is a young province to start with. But when you look at the people who are actually moving in that seventy-five thousand, the bulk of them are between 20 and 30 years old. So you're getting a ton of students, a ton of young households, and those people are predominantly renters, especially if they're gonna go land in Calgary, and then a year or two later, move to Edmonton. Um, the rental market in Calgary is bananas. Rents are up 12 to 16%, depending on the submarket. Uh, Edmonton rents are up anywhere between six and 14%. Uh, I just moved rents up in my building, $91, an average room. And that was just a bit over 10%? Yeah. yeah. And I know that we've raised ours, obviously, just on move-in sometimes, anywhere from 10 to 15% on, on purchase, right? All right, so I know that you, you love multifamilies, like I love multifamilies. So let's talk multifamily market in Edmonton right now, or, or surrounding areas. Like, what kind of trends are you seeing? Um, yeah, definitely. So there's a couple things that are moving very quickly. There's kind of three three buckets that I'll put into um, the transactions into that are really good. The value add stuff like you guys are doing, because we have the majority of our inventory is built in the 60s and 70s. It hasn't seen any really serious love since then. So there's a drag it into the 21st century philosophy, which you, you have to just screw the budget. Let's just make it really nice. Um, I don't know about screw the budget, but yeah. okay. <laughs> but the lift is huge. Yes. The opportunity is huge. And the lender appetite is massive. So that works. Um, Edmonton has one of the most progressive attitudes towards infill housing. So the same lot, a 50 foot wide lot in Edmonton that in Ontario you could maybe get a triplex on if you don't screw it up. And you're gonna pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in fees. Here, 50 foot pocket, I can get 10 units on it. And my costs with the city and permitting are around here. They, they are like maybe 10,000 bucks. Yeah. So a huge, huge amount of infill, small scale infill happening. Um, and then it has a lot of land. So there's still a lot of greenfield happening. Um, four and six story walk-ups and then a decent number of towers. I'm actually a little bit worried at the moment that that part of the market might be oversupplied. There's lots of guys who want an 18 month lease are offering two months free or like it's like, here's a smorgasbord of incentives to your pick. But all three of those, you know, even despite the headwinds of some vacancy or some maybe some overbuild, um, the capital's chasing it, the renters are chasing it, they're in front of the right demographics, 
and the city has started to pull back a little bit on how much sprawl we're willing to have. So when you go to a market like Calgary, you have reserves, you have mountains, there's only so much they're gonna sprawl. Edmonton can just keep going, yeah. but they are starting to push it back in. Well, it's pretty flat. It is, it is very flat here with a very nice river in the middle. There is a nice river in the middle. All right, well, so what are your projections for the year, uh, coming years, like what's, what's Alberta gonna do? I, you know, in the context of a Canada that is a lot more um, cautious, with you're, you know, we're probably going to see some level of recession in BC and Ontario. Um, we're going to see a federal government that continues to pump money into everything, and I don't know that we're going to get inflation under control the way we want. I think people are going to keep moving to Alberta, both, uh, both just families and individuals, but businesses. Um, because it's a lot cheaper to do business here. The employment basis here, the tax structure is here, the resources people need here. So I think we're gonna see a lot of um, in migration, interprovincially, internationally, and movement of businesses here. You know, if Elon Musk was opening up Tesla in Canada, it would absolutely be longer. For better, for worse, for Canada. He, he did put a battery out plant in Windsor. It's, it's true, but I suspect that had something to do with some incentives, I'm guessing. I mean, probably. Or the Texas is enough, and I'm happy with that. Fair enough. I think that a lot of that is that when people come to a new place, they tend to rent before they buy, and that is going to continue to fuel the rental market here. Um, and we have an aging housing stock that needs to be replenished, so we're going to continue to see a lot of construction. Um, and even with flat cap rates, like I don't see we're going to see a lot of cap rate growth or flat compression. I think they're going to stay mostly flat, even with interest rates where there are. Um, but as rents grow and the agency goes down, I think we're going to see overall pricing on on existing apartment stock go up. Well, I mean, if rents are going up and cap rates stay the same, yeah, and we're not seeing a huge interest rate increase, of course, right? And, yeah. As long as we're all holding on to expenses, we are fighting tooth and nail to keep the line there. Yeah, yeah for sure. Oh, well, I mean, Price Waterhouse Cooper just uh, had a. Um, I report out that Edmonton is one of the top places to invest in Canada. Um, StatScan and Conference Board of Canada say uh, Alberta is going to lead the country in economic growth in the next five to seven years. And again, like you said, I mean, uh, Ontario is probably in a recession already. BC probably, maybe as well, uh, which is going to bring all of Canada into a recession. But yeah, Alberta is going to continue to grow year over year, month over month. And I mean, people are still going to move here, right? And that's, mm -hmm. like, again, like that program, whenever I've heard the radio ads, like it's, like they're bumping it in, in Ontario and people are listening. Definitely. Well, I th I th the funny thing too is, I mean, like we do a lot of work in, in secondary and tertiary markets around Alberta. And when you look at that 75,000 people that moved here last year, you know, somewhere right around 60 or 65% are international migrants. And a lot of those are young people. A lot of them are students, but they're not all coming to the University of Alberta and McEwen or to the University of Calgary and Mount Royal. A lot of them end up in tiny little colleges in the middle of nowhere. It's like the College of the Lakes or something in High Prairie. It's 300 people in an office building in the middle of nowhere in a thousand person town. But when you move here from India to get a teaching diploma, no one cares where you land. So there's a lot of small towns that have a huge student population like that. And a huge 300 people. It's true, yeah. But you right, have 300 have, people in a town of 1,000. Percentage-wise, we have secondary markets where we're seeing 20 and 30% rent growth in a year. Really? Because of between energy and forestry and agriculture, and then you layer students on top, it's a huge change in the small market. So obviously you're excited about uh, the prospects here in the, in, for the future. So what are you doing to take advantage of that right now? Definitely. Like, so we're doing the regular broker thing, right? We find people who want to sell buildings, we sell them, particularly when there's a chance to sell it from, you know, a family that might have owned it since they built it or for the last 10 or 20 years, to somebody who's going to bring it into the 21st century and create value. Um, there's money in that for both sides and it leads to a better housing stock and a better quality of life. Um, the development side, we're doing some development personally, um, and I think that's going to continue to be a huge thing. And people are always blown away, especially coming from BC and Ontario, that we don't have development cost changes. Like, if you want to go develop, 
you'll pay utility connection fees, but you're not paying community contributions and all the other things that happen in VC. You know, it's not uncommon to spend fifty to hundred thousand dollars per developable unit in Ontario. Taxes by another name. Yeah. So it's huge here. You know, there's no cost here. Well, there's well, well, no land transfer tax, no mm -hmm. provincial sales tax. Gas is twenty cents cheaper here, and I mean, yeah, hockey's better. The hockey is much. I better. tell you what, I have I have a bet on that, and I think I'm gonna win. But anyways, we digress. So guys, if you guys and ladies, everyone, uh, I use that ter term generically. If you guys are interested in investing in Alberta, whether you want to look to partner with uh, someone like myself or you're looking to buy or sell an apartment building, reach out to me. I'm happy to help. And yeah, but if you're just looking to place capital, I've got a couple opportunities right now for you to do that. And we always have off-market apartments if you're looking for that. So thanks everyone. We'll see you next time. Have a great Thursday.